This is not an abstract constitutional debate. This is a very real choice facing the voters. Mr. Ignatieff, Mr. Layton, Mr. Duceppe are all increasingly clear. If they have a minority parliament, they will in some manner try and get together and form a government. We don't know what its program will be. They'll negotiate that later. We do know that everything they, they're talking about points to higher spending and tax hikes. It points to renewed fighting over referendums, constitutions, and national unity. That's what it all points to. No clear plan on the economy, no clear plan for job creation. The other choice is to stay on the path we're on, where Canada's emerging strong from this recession, and what we need is stability, and the only way to get that stability in Parliament, continue on this path, is with a strong, stable, national, majority Conservative government, and only the Conservative Party can provide such a government. I'd like to put to you uh, Mr. Harper's own comment this morning. He said, and I quote Mr. Ignatieff in particular, Mr. Layton, Mr. Giuseppe, if you look at what they say in this campaign, it is very clear they're saying even if we receive a mandate from the people, they will defeat us on our budget. If they can, they will get together and form another alternative, some other kind of government. How exactly is he wrong? Terry, from the beginning of this campaign, I stated the constitutional rules. I don't make the rules up. They're the rules that apply to all parties in this business. I felt it was very important to come out right from the beginning and make it clear if you vote for the Liberal Party, you're going to get a Liberal government enacting the Liberal platform. Uh, this document here, that will form the basis of a, of a, of a Liberal budget. Uh, because I owe Canadians absolute clarity. If you vote Liberal, you're not voting for the NDP. You're not voting for the Bloc. You're voting for the Liberal Party and a Liberal government. I've been clear, I also have made it very clear, that if I have the honour to form a government, uh, wi and that will occur if I get more seats than other parties, then I will have the obligation of presenting a budget to the House of Commons, and I will have to seek the, the confidence of the House of Commons like anybody else. Same rule for Mr. Harper. If he gets more seats, he will have to seek the confidence of the House of Commons. These are the rules of the constitutional system of our country. I respect them, and I certainly assume and hope that Mr. Harper and other parties will do the same. What he said, that you are saying in this campaign that if the scenario unfolds, as you described yesterday, where he gets a minority, You've already said you will vote against his budget. The other parties have said the same thing. My question was, no, Terry, how is Mr. Harper wrong in how, how he describes your Terry, position? Terry, you, you, you took me the fatal step too far. I have never said I will vote against his budget. What I've said is, I want to form a government. I want to have, get most seats. I then want to offer a budget to the, to the Parliament of Canada and seek its support. If he gets more seats than he, me or my party, then he will present a budget. And hey, you know what I do with a budget? I read it. Uh, Stephen Harper seems to basically be calling you a liar, saying he doesn't take you at your word, that you don't have a plan to topple his government with NDP and block help right away, uh, and that you know that you would cooperate in some way. And he seems to have got some more ammunition today from your own party. Uh, this from a veteran liberal, liberal, albeit an unnamed one, quoted by Jane Tabor in The Globe, <laughs> says Mr. Ignatieff and his team want to, quote, telegraph their intention to form a government if Harper has 153 seats or less. The fear is that they would look like liars if they didn't come clean now, that there would be an informal coalition with the NDP and the Bloc. Is that your plan? No. <laughs> No. I repeat, no. I don't have a problem about coalition, and I don't have a problem about respecting the constitution of my country. With the greatest respect, I, I would tell you that Mr. Harper has a problem with both. Basic respect for our institutions and basic uh, credibility on the coalition issue. Quickly in follow up. Civics 101 seems to be such a popular topic these <laughs> days. You know, there's a lot of posturing going on. Uh, Har Mr. Harper has said if he's re elected, he will bring in the same budget. Some opposition parties said, well, they would absolutely oppose that budget. Does a minority government give the Prime Minister the right to bring in that same budget? or the fact that he's asked for a majority and won't have got one, does that 
put the onus on him to do something differently. Roger, these are legitimate questions, but you know who decides what happens here? Honest to God, it's the Canadian people. It's the people watching this program. They decide. On the 2nd of May, they are going to give all of us our marching orders. And what I'm saying is, I don't make the rules here. The Canadian people make the choice, and then I follow the constitutional rules set down in our country. And I respect them to the letter. And uh, I can't be clearer than that. If Mr. Harper wins a minority government and presents, as he says he intends to, the budget that he has already presented to Parliament. Will you vote it down, as I believe you told uh, John Iveson from the Post you would? Will you? There is an aspect of if my mother had wheels, she'd be a bus here. I've said very clearly, I've said very clearly that if Mr. Harper gets more seats in the election, I certainly hope he doesn't, I hope that it's actually me, but were he to do so, he has obviously got the constitutional right to form a, bu bu uh, a government and he's got the right to present a budget. Then the question becomes for me as a responsible leader of the opposition to evaluate the budget I get presented with. Whatever he says now, that's not the issue to me. The issue is what budget will he present if he comes back to face Parliament. That's the budget that I will evaluate when I get it. Well, just the follow up that, if you don't mind, is, um, and this was a question that was put to Mr. Harper earlier, what obligation or onus may he have in that situation uh, to find a way to get a budget passed, that is, working with other parties? Does, is there an obligation, or, or are we now in this era where, where, where you kind of govern or you don't? James, you've asked an excellent question. An excellent question, a fundamental question. I think he has a very strong obligation. And I, just as, it's, it's symmetrical, just as I have a very strong obligation, if I have the honor to have the most seats and I have to present a budget, I have the obligation to make the system work. It's as simple as that, to find budgetary measures that have the approval of the House of Commons. And I've made it clear from day one of the campaign, our budget will be this document. And then we work with other parties to, to secure their support for it. And there, there's, you know, there's give and take here, but the basic fiscal framework that we presented has to be solid because I can't, I can't, uh, uh, I can't start uh, doing add-ons here that would, would put the fiscal stability of our country at risk. So, of course, I have to seek the, the support of the House of Commons, and so does Mr. Harper. I want to clear up because there was that report from John Iveson based on an interview with you that supposedly your position was clearly that same budget which they say they're going to bring back if they have the chance is a non-starter. Is that still your position or it seems a little different? Bill, my position is were Mr. Harper to have more seats he would have the right to form a government then he would present a budget to the House of Commons and then my duty were I to be in opposition would be to assess that budget and vote on it. And I'm not going to comment on a budget I haven't seen. But remember what I said to, to James Cudmore. A prime minister after an election has an obligation to present a budget that he thinks can pass the House of Commons. I have exactly the same obligation. And I've said this: our budget will be the family pack and we will work with other parties to seek the support of the House of Commons. That's how the constitutional system works. Dernière question, last question, Mr. Um, Mr. Ignatieff, if uh, Mr. Harper was asked today if he did get elected in a minority government, would he be willing to put some water in his wine to get the cooperation of the parties? And his answer was he doesn't accept the premise of the question because he doesn't believe the opposition parties are willing to work with him. Are you willing to work with Mr. Harper should there be a conservative minority on May 2nd? There are few remarks that illustrate more clearly the difference between him and me than that one. Who does he think he is? This is a parliamentary system. If, he's in a, if he comes back and has more seats and has to present a budget to the House of Commons, what does he think he is, the king here? Of course he has to put water in his wine. We all have to put water in our wine. Provided you don't sacrifice basic fiscal responsibility to the country, provided you don't sacrifice basic principle. I repeat something I said a couple of days ago. In the five years I've been in the House of Commons, two and a half years I've been uh, opposition leader, I've had about you know, two meetings with the guy. It's my way or the highway the whole time. Well, welcome back to a new world after May 2nd, were he to, were he to be in a minority government situation. I mean, it's Mr. Cudmore's question again. He has an obligation.
an obligation to en present français, a budget to present a budget that has the conference of the House of Commons, and I have the same obligation. If we do end up in that scenario, Mr. Ignatiev, what can you say to Canadians to assure them that this whole exercise was necessary? Because one of the issues going into this election was that it was an unnecessary election, it's expensive, and Canadians are still asking that question. But surely the, 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 the quote from Mr. Harper about I'm not willing to put water in my wine reminds us of why we're having an election in the first place. The consistent, ruthless, relentless disrespect for Parliament is why we're having an election in the first place. And after the 2nd of May, things better change.